Hey guys, it's Clay again with Texas Know How. Today we're going to focus on getting this Crown Vic final mounted. And we're going to have to drill the holes for these pipes that go in on the sides. Two pipes on both sides, as you know. Um, and we're going to have to get our plates on the back tack welded in so everything's good. Then we'll roll this Crown Vic out from under the frame again so we can do some really serious welding. And we'll weld those plates up, put some side brackets on them and uh, get that finished up today. So, let's get with it. Hey, somebody asked online, can you reverse your plates? So, I've got them reversed right now. Um, as you can see, that looks different than it does when it's the other way. Our arrowhead angle is on the inside now, instead of on the outside. The only problem with this is that back bolt to hold the plate onto your quarter inch steel is right under the frame so I had to take that bolt out there is another hole just on the forward side of this let me set those down just on the forward side of this plate that I think would be in here somewhere you might could figure out a way to maybe put a nut right here and weld it um, but you know that's the only problem is your your bolt pattern doesn't really kind of reveal everything this way but I like the way that the the plate itself is more centered underneath the frame if you look it is actually a little better centered I think uh, less hanging out on the sides I'm not going to do this because I've already rotated my bushings and one thing you need to note is if you those bushings have to be in a certain way uh, the, the, thick, the thick part of the rubber is to the inside of the truck whenever they're mounted up correctly and the reason that it's like that is because if you think about your lower control arm or your lower arm here on the on the uh, vehicle now this is forward up this way if this tire hits a big old chug hole or something like that as you're driving along it's going to it's going to slam backwards which is going to drive this this arm right here in to the inside of the truck and so those bushings need to have their best resistance rubber kind of on the inside of the cup to kind of take that shock if you have them rotated which I've got them rotated right now because I swapped the brackets left to right and I didn't rotate my my uh, bushings again and I'm just doing this for a test fit to show you guys um, it has the thin part of the rubber on the inside and the thick part of the rubber on the outside now if you're not going to be driving in reverse a lot and hitting a lot of chug holes in reverse this isn't going to help you so that's what I'm saying. When if you want to make a decision to put these brackets in this direction or this orientation and swap them left to right, then you have to take that into account before you cut your bushings loose and rotate them and put that heavy thick side of the bushing on the inside of the vehicle. So that's opposite of the way I've got it now. So I'm not going to stay this way. I'm going to take a little bit of time and put the reverse the brackets back this was just a demonstration to show you guys online that you can do this if you want to now you still are going to have to put some reinforcement plates on this um, if I get down here level with this you can see it doesn't touch the frame so you're still going to have to come along here with some plating and drop it right in here inside this the head of this screw and fill that gap maybe something across the front here so that's got to be done regardless on the 67 through 72 frame you're gonna have to do that regardless because this is sitting with the weight on it and as you can see my frame is just right on those little bosses in there where the screws come through now let's get to marking these uh, these holes under here we got to mark from the bottom up onto our our frame where those those holes will go through and then we'll transfer that line up to the top drill a hole up here as well that's big enough for that entire pipe to fit down through and it'll sit on top of here so the hole down here only needs to be probably whatever you know an eighth inch bigger than the bolt or something like that hey guys I also had some people say well what's a good point on the frame if my if my uh, frame horns right here are messed up or been cut off or they don't trust this measurement off of this hole or off of that big hole like for me I've got a big gap right here where I cut a bunch of rust out so I don't have a front radiator mount on this side well remember these square holes where I kind of welded my support my support piece across and I just kind of went like this on top of them um, 
that back edge of that square hole is a real nice, or the front edge or something is a real nice mark on both sides that you can use to measure back to your crown bit. So where you want to measure on the crown bit is right here. Underneath, it's about the same level. Underneath this upper control arm right here, or upper, upper uh, A-frame, there is a milled surface on that crown bit. It's milled off very accurately on both sides. So touch right there with your tape. Again, you're going to jab it in like this. And then you're going to come down here and catch a measurement. And I'm barely on a little bit of an angle, but not bad. And I'm measuring 22 and 3 eighths to the front, to that ed front edge of that square hole. 22 and 3 eighths. Let's check the other side. I come over here, same flat surface on the crown bit, 22 and 3 eighths and 1 16th. So I'm 1 16th back on this side. Not too bad. So I think I can kind of live with that. Um, if I didn't want to, if I didn't want to live with that 1 16th difference on the frame and, and everything, I think which is fine. I mean this thing's going to be, for this truck, it's going to be fine. Believe me, 1 16th of an inch is not much to be off. But if I wanted to fix that, I could wall out that hole over just a little bit on that pin and, and tap this crown big that way, that sixteenth of an inch, which I may do when I bolt it up. I'll just recheck this measurement, get that sixteenth cleaned up. Then it'll be exactly the same uh, from a reference point on the frame back to the crown big on both sides. Something else I did was I checked the uh, center of this wheel to the center of my back wheel and I did it with a chalk mark on the ground after I did a plumb bob straight down chalk mark on the ground and uh, you can measure your um, wheel base this way and just make sure that you got the entire crown vic in the right spot because I haven't moved my rear axle yet and what I'm getting is 131 and three quarters and um, I believe let me look that up and I'll get back to you on what it's supposed to be but I think Okay, so I did go look that up. It's 131. That's what it's supposed to be. So when this thing says 131 and a half, or right at 5 eighths, I'm a half inch to 5 eighths forward. And again, when I went out and checked that underneath the, the uh, fender, the way I did that, by the way, was I took the center of the wheel and measured back to this door that's still on the cab. And then I used an eighth inch gap to get the same measurement off of my fender out there and I put it in the old stock spot, didn't like it, moved it forward where I liked it a little bit, and the measurement I get right here is, this, hopefully this is helpful to you guys, but off that door, and if you add an eighth inch, it's 31 and a half to the middle of that wheel, 31 and a half. I'm just coming off that door about a gap's width, and it's 31 and a half. So that's another measurement you can use, is come off the door to the center line of the wheel, 31 and a half is very close and that'll put you about a half inch. It's probably 31 if you had it in the original spot, but 31 and a half puts you a half inch longer on your wheelbase. There you go. This is to fit under here. Tight. Good thing I'm kind of skinny. Marking these holes in the back. There's a slot on this side, so I'm doing the whole slot so I kind of understand where it is front to back. But then I'm coming over about right here because I think that's better positioned in the frame. And I'm putting it right there on this side. On this side, all you have is a hole. This is the driver's side. So when I go up in here with this big old fat Sharpie, all I'm doing is just going around. And then I reverse it so that little felt tip will not just bent over you know okay one more thing I'm gonna do guys is see how the when you pull this uh, the sway bar up it touches on the front here but it doesn't touch in the back right here um, that's common because the setups a little different than it was on the crown big the frame kind of came down on the crown big but this was down here and this angle was right so it's been sitting in you know a wrecking yard for a while 
um, and these little rubber bushings are dry and they're, they won't rotate. And if I start rotating and we grab something like some big old channel locks or something and start pulling on it, it almost feels like I'm going to bend that bracket. So what the guys were telling me uh, on uh, online is to go ahead and take them off right back here on that vertical piece of metal and um, bolt this front bolt up tight so it'll be up tight like that because you got to mark your back hole and you want that thing to be sitting flat on there just like it's going to be um, you know whenever it's bolted up to mark that hole so you can get that hole perfect um, so do this unhook, unhook it back here on the on the wheel side and then just right raise it up until this touches mark the holes get it drilled put your other bolt in so they're both bolted and this is going to be it sitting up high and then you can just take that back and you've got so much leverage you can just take it down and get it lined back up put the bolts back in so that's one way to get that line and i'm going to do it right now before i remove the crown bit from underneath here so that way that's all done and ready All right, now those are marked. So you can see over on the side over here how much that had to come up. Can you see it over there? That sway bar is up above the uh, location where it hooks to the uh, coupler there. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll get this bolted up and then we'll push it down. Okay, one more thing you want to put back on are these, are these upper brackets right here. Just snug them up. You don't have to overdo it. Make sure they're threading first. You never want to cross thread these things. That'd be bad. And I'll put a little drop of oil on them. Just since I'm going to be zipping them in and out. Okay, they have a little Loctite on them from the factory. And then you don't want to raise them up so the surface under here is flat. Just like that, you're going to have about a half inch gap on top of the frame. And what I'm doing here is this, these are slotted the whole way. So what I thought I would do is just draw a line right in the center of it. And then I can see where the bolts were last time on top of these brackets. So I'm going to mark a T right there. You'll be able to see it as well. When you look down on this, you can see where the old washer was. Pretty much in the middle of the frame. It's a little bit this way, I think. but. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to remove the Crown Vic, just get it back out from under here. Uh, it's a lot easier to drill those holes when the frame is a little higher off the ground. sway bar. And here's the back one for the Crown Vic uh, main subframe.
Might as well do the eighth inch holes on this side as well while I got the bit in there. Oh, now I can see it. <laughs> it's a black mark from a black marker right on a piece of paint that's still black under here. <laughs> That's why I couldn't see it. Right there. That's funny. Eighth inch bits getting a little duller. Let's do some measurement from up here. I mean, this pipe can go in there no problem. That's going to be fine. Okay, through the top. I'm going to go right here. interesting is I can check my my distances from my center line yeah it's kind of cool okay so I've got holes started you know what I'll do I'm gonna run a little wire between those and look and see how up and down they are all right guys you see how I took some of these pet pet fences, pet safe or whatever. I don't have an electric fence, but these were here when we moved in. Somebody had put one up and then left these in the garage. But I'm using them for this little rod. See how it's a real fine, nice rod? And I dropped it through my eighth inch pilot holes on both sides. And what I can do is look at, are they vertical? Yes, they are. Are the spacing between each the top and the bottom 10 inches? Yes, they are. Now, I'm looking here, same thing, between them, 10 inches, 10 inches, and that's what the different, the distance is on these holes if you measure them, the distance is 10 inches. See, I'll put 11 on that one, remember I'm killing an inch, and see how that one's right in the middle, so 10 inches. So everything's good. The other thing I did measure was I measured the center of this. If I measure, kill one inch on here, it's three and a half. And this way is six and a half. So I did measure that too from my reference hole here. So for instance, let's look at, sorry for the camera shaking, but if I want to go six and a half, See that? Six and a half. It's lined up. This one. Three and a half. Lined up. So I feel pretty good about it. Um, this closeness of this front driver's side hole is bothering me a little bit. How close it is to the frame right here. But if you look, what the reason is, I don't know if y'all can see this, but sight up this thing. Alright, if I put this square on the back of these two bosses for the engine mounts and then I slide them over to where it's against that pin okay that hole is just on the outside just like the pin but look up here that one's an inch over and that's on the driver's side front hole that's why it's closer to the frame I don't have a slot over there I've just got a hole now on this side if I do the same kind of same kind of thing and I was marking slots straight up you see how much closer I can get over here that's why I didn't go over so far I was just marking the slot so I probably only went over about three quarters of an inch on this side which is fine 
but it didn't put it as close to the frame the inner part of the frame so that hole being a hole and not a slot you got to put it where it is which is a little closer to the frame in there sway bar. Now I'm going to move back to the crown bit. Those pieces of metal coming off there are so hot, they're falling down my glove. Even if you had a lift, you'd still be under this when you're cutting it, but it is what it is. I decided to kind of push this bottom hole a little this way, just a little bit. I think I'll be fine and get it off that wall a little bit. It's about a half inch off the wall now. And I'd rather not be that close. So I'm going to push it just a little bit as I cut it. Okay. Now that I've kind of pushed it a little as I went, I'm going to keep going straight up. Good. I think I'm taking it to see if I can see it on there. I'm taking it to five eighths. I think I'm taking it to five eighths. bigger just so I have a little bit of room to play. Now, now we're talking. Let's see if I stayed six and a half. Oh yeah. That still looks good. Okay, let's go back one and get that back one. Gotta lay down for the first part of it, just to make sure you kind of stay centered, stay in that little eighth inch hole. I'm going right with the with the step bit right from the eighth inch hole. It's working fine. All right. I did the whole thing just from laying down and push up pretty good on it. Looking good. Looking good. That metal out of my glove. Alright, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna get the tops and the other side. I'm just drawing a line around this so I kind of know how big I gotta go with that thing. That's not perfectly centered, but that'll give me an idea how big I'm gonna have to drill a hole. Grab a little oil for my bit. Put my mouth work on it. I think one of these Harbor Freight bits will just about do the job and then it's going to be wore out.
far as I'm gonna go with that bit. I've got a, I've got one that broadens out quicker. Uh, that's sharp, and I was leaving it for these holes because I knew I had to go as big as that whole big old pipe. While I still got it chucked up, I'm going to go ahead and start on the other side. Oh yeah. Perfect. Now we're getting somewhere. There it starts threading. So this is gonna, we will be able to torque the crown bit to the frame first, then flip those top things down and put a nut and torque that nut down. But the, the crown bit will be actually torqued via the threads inside this pipe to the frame from the bottom. It's gonna be good. That's the only thing you don't get if you just use pipes in here. Good or bad, I don't know. But it's kind of nice. This is the way they, they did it originally, so I wanted to do it the same way. Yeah. I'll put the part number for these pipes on the on the video and these, these screws because you can still get them from Ford. Original stuff. Alright, let's go to the next one. A little cutting oil. I had to go all the way to the next to the biggest uh, ring on this, this fatter drill bit to do that. Get that to work right. And it's a lot of work. This drill gets hot. I have to let it cool off. So a little more cutting oil on it. I'm getting a... This is not official cutting oil. I'm just using some rear end oil. Some thick... It helps. I'm getting there. I got two more layers to go on that bit get, to get up there. This drill's hot. Anyway, this is what you do guys. I'm getting close. One more notch. I want you to be able to see me do at least one of these all the way through. cutting on this very top one that's when you got it. See that? Perfect. It's right on that hole in the bottom. That's how it's gonna work guys. Okay I've got the I've got the holes drilled and now I'm just gonna I came from the bottom so there's a lot of like sharp edges here here you know on these holes and under here so I'm just gonna take my grinder which has got a grinding wheel on it and then I've got a flapper disc too that I'll finish off and just clean all this up right here and get it ready for welding. Okay, now I've got that whole surface kind of ground down clean so it'll weld nice. I'm going to be putting a weld up here on top of these. You can see how that rear 
hole on each frame kind of got into another hole that was a factory hole that one looks good there's a serial number on your frame right in front of this one it start, mine started with a K and I had to grind that off a little to get that smooth and get it ready to weld but you can check this serial number against the one that's up here in your dash where is it oh maybe it's not on the dash of these I think it's on the door actually so if you look on the door yeah right here I don't know if that's gonna show up but you know what I'm talking about you can check this serial number on here actually I don't think it started with a K but the last three letters are 8332 let's go see if that matches Yep. See it there. Eight three three two. So that looks pretty cool. Got this one all shined up. You can see here it's glistening, ready to weld. So now <clears throat> I'm gonna put a brush on that um, uh, grinder right there, a cup brush, and I'm gonna go underneath, right over there where that that frame is starting to meet and remember that's where uh, the rear piece of the trailing arm has to be tack welded so I'm gonna go right over there and clean that up really good underneath the frame and over here too right by where the cab mount comes down clean it up real good so that it'll weld nice alright guys you want to get the area behind these holes as clean as you're going to get it because when you weld those things in it's going to be hard to get back there again so I'm using my brush I'm going to clean this out real good and then I'm going to roll the crown big back in here and see how I did Those holes look perfect. They hit right on there. When you look in there, it's perfect. This front, this front one was the one that's kind of tight. It's right on, man. It is right on. Look at that. Perfect. I don't want to thread it in there too much because it'll. I don't want to thread it in there too much because it'll start uh, tearing off my uh, thread locker. 
It's got built-in thread locker. But man, that looks good. Take my jack stands out. So basically, I'm lifting the truck up. And then I can go all the way back down where it's on the ground again. said I had a 16th inch difference. I have a little play in these pins and so if I pull this one forward and that one back I can get it just perfect. So that's what I did. I kind of brought this one forward. Man my holes are all lining up. I brought this one back just a little bit and if I take a tape measure and check that I'm pretty sure it's going to be right where I want it. What did I say that was? 22 and 3 eighths. And 22 and 3 eighths. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for the bolts, they came in this box. And then this is your part number right up here. Okay. And then for the um, for the uh, spacers, those big pipes, that's them right there. And then for the part number on the nuts, it's right there. Okay, I'm just making sure the. Uh these top plates line up with the bolts as well, so I kind of just put them back on here loosely and I'm looking down through and they line up really well. And I'm going to remove them and get them out of the way. protecting my uh, my boot right here on my power steering on the rack and pinion just laying it down there to protect it from sparks and slag Alright guys, this one, <clears throat> this one I welded the top first instead of the bottom like I just learned how to do. And it, when I welded the top, what it did was when that, when that weld heats up and then cools, it like draws it. And so it actually drew it, I welded right here first and it drew it out this way on the bottom. So I'm going to cut this little tack weld I did at the bottom while the bolt was still in and I didn't see this. And that's the other recommendation is... I would just hold these 
where there's when you look through it right here it's centered up on that hole in the bottom and then tack it and then look and tack it and look and if you're good then you can tack up here and look but it, when you leave the bolts in it it could be off a little bit just because it shifted while you were tightening it up or something so I actually recommend not having the bolts in it when you tack and get this thing welded in so I'm going to use my die, my grinder here and just cut that little tack down there so I can push it over. Now that's loose, so I can look down in here and get it straight and tack it. All right, so I got that broke loose, shine it up a little bit, put it back in, line it up, and just tacked it just now. I forgot I didn't have the camera on, so I'm starting to weld it now. I think you can just side align these a lot better than you can leave the, when you leave the bolt in like this, this bolt's hanging in here, I can't see what I'm doing. So this one I got lucky on when I look down in it, it's real straight. Yeah, this one's real straight, but I just got lucky that, that bolt didn't shift or something. So now I'm just gonna weld. That. I don't know if you can see it. Bottoms are welded. The tops, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till I get the crown bick up out of the way, and then I can just sit there and just walk all the way around it really pretty. Because I tried to do this front one down here that you can't see, and it's it's ugly. I don't even want to show it to you. So for all of these three, I'm gonna get the crown bick out of the way, so I'm not worried about the rubber and everything else I might be melting. And then I can just sit there and walk right around this thing. So, those don't look too bad. I'll shine them up real quick to show you. Kind of ugly right there, but nice bead around there. I'll come around on this side right here and clean that up. This one looks good. Not too bad. This is my ugly one. <laughs> All right.